My name's Alvin A. Horn. I'm known also as Andy. I, uh, my last attained rank was as a Navy Lieutenant. By that time, I had my orders to the Swift Boat School. Um, we, uh, I flew off as the Princeton was coming near Hawaii. Uh, I actually left just after the, the astronauts had, I think the astronauts had left earlier. But uh, I flew into, uh, was dropped off at uh, Hawaii International Airport and ended up catching an air, a, a Navy flight out of Hickam and uh, worked my way home for some leave and then uh, 10 or 15 days later reported to uh, Mare Island for boat training at the Naval Inshore Operations Training Center. Went through boat school uh, and that's in Mare Island, that's in Northern California and uh, went through boat school and uh, we, we were scheduled to leave uh, the United States in early September. Uh, we did flying from uh, the Seattle area up over by Alaska and then down to Japan and then down to Cameroon. So um, I think my in-country date was on or about September oh, 10 or 12 of uh, 1969. After a day or two at the Markentine base at Cameron Bay, an introductory uh, uh, welcomes, so to speak, I was assigned to Coastal Division 13 in Caplo. Uh, and uh, probably for a week or two, I had uh, indoctrination patrols with other boat officers. Uh, Tom Costarino uh, was one that stood out in my mind. And then I got my boat, the PCF 59, in about uh, the first week in September excuse me, October. From there, I was primarily patrolling in the, uh, on the Cochin River, although I had patrols also in the Hamlong and in the Bossack, but uh, Cochin became my primary patrol area. I was initially partnered up with Bill Lanham in the 37 boat, and we, were, we did a lot of nice stuff. Uh, we were eventually separated, not because of our fine performance at sea, but because we were getting into trouble. Uh, not, not any, nothing serious, <laughs> but we ended up having a different track, and besides, he was getting short. And so uh, eventually I started becoming an OTC of, of various operations. We ran, uh, did the board and search routine, a lot of that. We did um, uh, some daytime raids and we did night work. And the night work uh, was, I would say we, I participated in maybe five or six night ambushes that were uh, well, probably three or four of them were very successful. Others were not. Um, nobody got hurt on our side of the equation. I remember that one of the ambushes Bill Lanham and I set was in uh, pursuant to orders, was in uh, conflict with a Southwest Conference football game to be broadcast at uh, sometime around one in the morning on Armed Forces.
horses radio. So when the appropriate time came, one of us made a, uh, an airburst of some sort, uh, reported to Sepia that our position had been compromised. We didn't tell them we'd compromised it. And uh, then we left and pulled out into the coach inn, tied our boats together, and uh, drank some cold beer and listened to the game and talked about life and uh, what we would do after the war. And it was Arkansas playing somebody, I don't know. It didn't really matter to me. Um, but that, uh, with that, I think that explained at least one of the ambushes.